Thank you all so much for being here this evening. For those of you who don't know, I am Eva Marie Cross, and I am a teacher here at St. Paschal's. I'm the youth minister and a lay associate of the Blessed Sacrament. St. Peter Julian Amard says, Jesus adores his heavenly Father. He thanks him for all benefits and blessings, makes reparation for our sins, and prays for us and the whole world. Because he loves us, he is thinking of each one of us in particular. He is there, hour by hour, preparing for us the graces which we need. He looks for us. He is waiting for us, ready to welcome us. Jesus wishes us to go to him as we would go to our Father, asking him for all that we need with the implicit trust of a child and confiding to him our joys, our wishes, our hopes, and fears, and the souls dear to us. When I was 20 years old, I went on a retreat called Tech, Teens Encounter Christ. It's an amazing nationwide community that anyone from juniors in high school to 75 years old can attend. It truly changed my life. It was there that I had my first and most powerful experience of Eucharistic adoration. And for the following 27 years, adoration is one of my most favorite and calming prayer experiences for me. I remember early on in my teaching career, I was struggling with some people I worked with. Now this was over 20 or so years ago. I just felt left out, kind of an outsider, and I didn't fit in with the clique. Looking back now at the age of 47, I was probably just overthinking it, but when you're in your early 20s, it just kind of felt off. It was during the time that St. Paschal's had perpetual Eucharistic adoration. So Jesus was always exposed in the morning when I first arrived here at work. So I decided to stop in on my way to my classroom, and I would just surrender my day to Jesus. I begged him to help me with this feeling of not belonging and uneasiness for that particular kid in my class who was giving me a hard time. I would just lay everything I was feeling on the altar, and I just said to him, you need to deal with this. And sure enough, things got better. I decided to sign up for my own holy hour, and what a powerful time that was for me. I actually used to get mad when other people were there during my holy hour because I didn't want to share my time with Jesus. I know that's not very nice, but oh my goodness, those holy hours were so amazing and crucial in my faith journey. I can't begin to tell you how many hours I have sat in that very chapel and prayed and cried my heart out, yelled at God, begged God to listen to my prayers, to answer my prayers. I journaled, I read scripture, I might have fallen asleep a few times, I listened to music, I sat and prayed with my friends so often, and I just remained there with Jesus. It was during adoration I fell more in love with our Eucharistic Lord. He became very real to me, as real as you are here. Every time, it's just like visiting a friend and just sitting there and resting and remaining. When you figure out that power of adoration and you begin to have that relationship with Jesus, nothing else compares. Has my life been easy? Um, no. I struggle constantly. I am literally a hot mess majority of the time. Just ask my mother. I learned, like Peter Julian did, that Jesus the, in, Jesus in the Eucharist is the solution for everything. It was because of Jesus I found peace in fighting and beating cancer. I was able to heal after the pain of the divorce that I went through. I am able to manage difficulties with my finances, depression, I have anxiety, stress from work, and watching family members pass away. Being a follower of Jesus doesn't mean life will be easy, because we all know how hard life is. But with our Eucharistic Lord, we are able to make it through, and he helps carry us through every aspect of our lives, the good, the bad, and the ugly. As Catholics, we have a wonderful opportunity to spend time with Jesus, not only at Mass along with our fellow parishioners, but at adoration as well. Adoration deepens our relationship with God. This practice can strengthen our faith while increasing our desires to experience Jesus even more so in the Eucharistic celebration. Adoration allows us to reflect on how God is calling us, 
how can we share our gifts, and ultimately, how to become more Christ-like. We are strengthened during adoration simply by knowing that Christ abides in the space that surrounds us. After all, Jesus is present in the Blessed Sacrament, front and center, where we cannot miss him. Whether we pray, meditate, or even let our minds wander, we can be assured that Christ is here with us. Eucharistic devotion affirms our faith in the real presence of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament, and it encourages us to practice the practice of adoration, praise, and thanksgiving. St. Peter Julian Amard says, In this sacrament he lives. He wishes us to speak to him, and he will speak to us. Everyone may speak to our Lord. Is he not there for all? Does he not say, Come ye all to me? This familiar converse between the soul and our Lord is true Eucharistic meditation. It is adoration. Everyone has the grace for it. Look upon your holy hour of adoration as a heavenly hour, an hour in paradise. If you go to it as if you were going to heaven to the divine banquet, you will long for this hour and hail it with joy. Part of our life in the Eucharist retreat for teens is always Eucharistic adoration. At the end of our retreat, we always do a recap, and I ask the teens what was their favorite part. Almost always, even those non-Catholic kids, the teens said our time in adoration is what touched their hearts. Part of what we do in our light retreat is we follow St. Peter Julian's simple formula to help with adoration. You divide the Eucharistic hour into four parts or quarters, and each quarter has one of the four ends of the sacrifice. The four great acts of adoration, thanksgiving, reparation, and petition comprise our entire duty towards God, the whole of Christian life. In his writing, St. Peter Julian Amart says, the first quarter is adoration. Adore our Lord by an act of faith. Simply put, say, I adore you and love you, Lord. I believe in you. I trust in you. Speak, to your, speak of your love and devotion to the Lord. It will open your heart of the divine master and the treasures of his grace. Be faithful to it with simplicity and devotion. The second quarter is Thanksgiving. Adore the immense and personal love of Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist. Thank him then with all your heart and with all your strength. In the third quarter is reparation. Adore your Eucharistic Lord and offer him reparation in the name of so many who forget to adore and ask him for forgiveness. Adore Jesus and seek his forgiveness. In the fourth quarter is petition. Adore our Lord in the most divine sacrament, pleading unceasingly for you, sharing to his heavenly Father his sacred words, his sacred heart pierced with the lance, in order to obtain mercy for you and yours, and unite with his prayer and his intentions. The act of adoration, in addition to and outside of Mass, prolongs and intensifies all that takes place during the liturgical celebration itself. Indeed, only in adoration can a profound and genuine reception mature. And it is precisely this personal encounter with the Lord that then strengthens the mission obtained in the Eucharist, which seeks to break down not only the walls and separate the Lord and ourselves, but also and especially the walls that separate us from one another. With all the turmoil and uncertainty in our lives, especially in our country right now, Jesus offers us a place to rest and be refreshed he asks us to put our trust in him. This is the invitation of Jesus to his abiding presence in the Eucharist. Eucharistic adoration is a moment of intense and personal relationship with the Lord. It is a privileged experience of deep communion with Christ. All Jesus asks is that you show up. Thank you.